need to get out of here or whatever. The Cowboys aren't playing yet. <laughs> Somebody's playing somewhere. I want to share with you out of the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 1. I'm going to share the first two verses with you. Deuteronomy 1. These are the words Moses spoke to all of Israel in the desert east of the Jordan. That is, in Arabah, opposite Suf, between Paran and Tobil, Laban, Hazaroth, and Dishabah. It takes 11 days to go from Horeb to Gadish Barnea by the Mount Seir Road. This is God's Word for God's people. Thank you, God. You're probably thinking, what are we going to get out of that? It's about the Master. It's about God knowing wherever you're at, whatever's going on in life. I'm going to share a true story with you. And I don't want you animal lovers to, to hate me or dip down on me or go find another church. I don't want you to do that. It's not that bad, but I probably shouldn't have done it. We were on the ranch in Frankston about 40 years ago. This young man from Dallas had just come in and bought the place. He wanted me to stay and take it over and run it. Had a bunch of uh, nice cattle. We had some uh, what we call F1 heifers. They were Brayford and Hereford Cross heifers. They were just they were about seven eight hundred pounds. Just beautiful, beautiful calves. And we had a dog, a dog named Goober. <laughs> and Goober had been in our family since our two older kids were a little bitty. We got Goober when he was about <laughs> six or eight weeks old. Goober was a was a white German Shepherd. Just a beautiful dog. And he grew up with our kids. He grew up protecting our kids. He grew up, you didn't come in that yard unless he knew you kind of dog. He was very protective of our home, of our, of our children especially. But I guess in a way, I was Goober's master, maybe. That's in a little terms. And Goober got to be a problem sometimes. He didn't just do what I wanted him to do. He didn't behave. And he got to where he was chasing the cattle when I would try to bring them up. He was trying to help me. So it got to the point, whenever I was pinning cattle or something like that, I would have to put Goober in the tool shed. That was the only place to hold him. And so I put him in there, and I left to ride down to get those heifers to bring them up. And those heifers were, I don't know, they were, they were just beautiful. And I was bringing them up. We had a lane all the way, so once you brought them out of the pasture, you had a lane about 20 yards wide, and they were they were in your in your possession. And I was bringing them up, and there was a, a big lake that we had to cross. And we crossed on the dam. And on the right side, it was nothing but just straight down. And on the left, at the bottom of the dam, about 15 feet, was that big lake. So there's not a whole lot of places to go. So I was taking the calves and pushing them across, and they were they were just going all across the, the dam like they were supposed to. And I looked up, and here come Goober. <laughs> and Goober was running just as hard as he could. And I mean, he got into the middle of those heifers, and those heifers just scattered. Some of them went downhill, some of them hit the water. I mean, they were just everywhere. And I was so mad. I was so furious at that dog. And I went on home. I let the heifers kind of regroup themselves. They were in a mess. And so I went on to the house, and of course, Goober was following me. And I got up to the house, and I tied my horse up, lowered my tailgate. The Goober jumped in. Now, I'm not a guy that carries a dog with me. I, you know, they, I, they don't normally ride in the truck with me and all that. So I dropped the tailgate. He jumped up, closed the tailgate, got in the truck, drove out the gate, and took off. I was so mad at that. Now, y'all don't hate me, okay? This story comes out all right. But just we don't hate me. <laughs> so I drove off. And I drove about eight or nine miles <coughs> to an area where there were a lot of homes. <coughs> homes. And I walked back and let the tailgate down. Goober dropped out. I put the tailgate up. And I took off. I was finished with that dog. I was through. 
And I came back home a different way. That dog was smart. I wasn't going to let him out smart that. When I got home, Mary and the kids, the two kids at that time, were waiting. What did you do? Where is Goober? What did you do with him? And I began to explain to them, what, what, what did you do with Goober? Where is that? She didn't, they didn't want to hear what was going on. Of course, I got mad. I felt like a heel. Mm -hmm. And I turned around and I went to try to find the dog. <laughs> I drove and I tried to find him. I drove that whole area could not find that dog. And 30 minutes, I came back home. Mary was crying, calling her dad. Daddy, you took Uber off. And so Daddy went and tried to find the dog. He went looking, couldn't find the dog. So we give up. About an hour and a half, no Uber. So I, I was just sitting there. I knew everybody was staring at me and thinking terrible thoughts about me and you know what I had done and all this. <coughs> that evening, walked out the front door and there was Goober laying on the steps. <laughs> he just got up, and, you know, glad to see you. you know, he was just tickled to death. There he was. He forgave. He had no thoughts of what I had done. Nothing bothered him. I was had a lot of relief. I felt better about it because my kids and my wife were very unhappy. But he looked at me as though I was the master. And whatever I was doing or allowing in his life was okay. And he accepted it. But he did everything that he could. He traveled many, many miles to get back to the master. You see, the whole point of this is God knows where we're at. Amen. God knows the direction in our life. God has been with us from the beginning. He was with the nation of Israel by day. He was with them by night. He knew their needs, their doubts, their fears. All He wanted the people to do was to obey. Was to have faith in Him. That's all He wanted. That's kind of like Guru. All He wanted to do was just obey. Drop the tailgate, He's up. That's all He wanted from His people. Was to be faithful. To be faithful to Him and the things that He had for them. We talk about a God who, who created, who formed, who hung the moons, who, who hung the stars and holds them in place. We talk about a God who has created this universe. And we talk about Him as though He is my God. We talk about how we, how we trust and we, we, we put our life in His hands. But the question is sometimes, do we really? Do we really, are we really that faithful to Him? Or do we lean on self? Do we lean on our own things? Sometimes there's, there's things in life where we try to do and we try to handle ourselves. If we would just remember to lean on Christ. That's it. That would take care of so many of our problems. Jesus said in John 7, on the last and the greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the Scriptures have said, streams of living water will flow from within him. If we have the faith, if we believe in Christ, God, as we say we do, we wouldn't be relying upon the cisterns of the world that we drink from. We have a crutch. We have so many things that we rely upon time and time again. And if we have that faith in Christ, 
we would be drinking from His well. We wouldn't be using the crutches sometimes that we, we hang on to. The cane sometimes that we lean on. In our life, we would not need those things because we believe and trust God. And God knows where we're at. Amen. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking about these things. I'm talking about things in life that we hang on to, that we cherish so dearly, that we just do not want to give up. We can't get rid of it. What is our golden calf? What is it that we worship so much in this world that we just won't let go? God is wanting to take care of us. God has not lost us. He knows where we're at. And He would take care of us if we allowed Him. But we rely on those little streams that we make ourselves. Do we really have that faith? Do we really have the faith that we're talking about? You know, I want to say sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. But those times that I do and those times that I really rely upon God and know that God is going to take care of this, it's so much better and have to worry about what am I going to do? It's about letting God be God. It's about realizing that He is the Master. And we're Goober. We're Goober. We should be willing to come back and do everything that we could Please the Master. Even when we run through the cabs and make such a mess of our day, we need to rely on the Master. He can fix it. He can make you feel better. It's all about knowing who's in charge. What's your golden calf? What is it that you just won't let go of that you lean upon all the time? God knows what you're going through. God knows the situation in life. Let Him have it. Just bow down to Him and go to Him. And say, Lord, here I am. I've really messed up. Forgive me. I've been unfaithful. Forgive me. All these things that we just kind of push to the back. And He's there waiting. Waiting for us to get back to the house. This altar is always open. It's always there. If you, want, if you want to just come and kneel and just say, Lord, here I am. You know what I, you know the desires, the hurts in my life. Amen. Why don't you stand with us as we sing? Take time to be holy, 395, trust in Just take a few minutes and realize who God is.
a little time to be friends with someone. Take a little time to help someone in their troubles and their needs. Take a little time to love. That almost sounds like the gospel. Isn't it? It's about Jesus Christ. Who would like to dismiss us today? Father, I thank you for this, this day, this time that we have. I pray, Father, as you as you watch over us, that we feel your presence in each and everything that we do. I pray, Father, that you help us in times that we struggle, times of weakness. Even celebrate with us the times that we're on the mountaintops. I thank you, Father, for your son who died on a cross for me. It's in your son's precious and holy name that we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.